Hello everyone, and welcome to this quick tutorial on man-in-the-middle attacks with ARP spoofing. Now, ARP spoofing basically fools a computer into thinking that a particular IP address is actually associated with a different MAC address. So, an attacker comes in and says, Hey, Computer 1, if you're looking for .12, it's at C86C, which is the attacker's MAC address. Similarly, it tells Computer 2, .12, that Hey, if you're looking for .11, it's at C86C. Now, by doing this, whenever Computer 1 sends something out to .12, it'll use Computer 3, the attacker's MAC address. So therefore, and similarly vice versa, Computer 2 will send everything to the attacker as well. So, because of that, the attacker is in the middle of all of the communication that goes on in between these two computers. And they can either just look at, or they can edit the packets that go back and forth between these two computers. And so you can get a lot of information from that. So, to demonstrate this, I've set up a simple environment in VirtualBox. Two machines, our server, uh, Ubuntu 2, and our client, Ubuntu 1, and finally our attacker, Kali 1. Kali is a Linux distro that has a lot of great attack tools. So, uh, first thing to do is to set up IP forwarding Kali, so that way anything that Kali receives that's not addressed to it, it'll forward on to the appropriate address. Uh, next thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the network with the nmap command, looking between IP addresses 10 and 15 on our local network. You'll notice that here we have our two computers that we're interested in, dot one one and dot one two. Dot one two is our server. It has an open port that's running the FTP service. So, in order to begin our ARP spoof, we're going to use the ARP spoof command. It's a program that comes with Kali over interface Ethernet zero. Uh, for this particular command, our target is going to be .12, and we're going to be telling .12 that we are computer .11. So that will start sending out the ARP packets, and similarly, we're going to ARP spoof and tell .11 that we are computer .12. And so now we're in the middle. It constantly sends out these packets once every second, so in case .11 actually gets the correct address of .12, it'll override it uh, as soon as it gets a new packet from us. Now finally, last but not least, I'm going to start off the dsniff tool, which just takes a look at the traffic that's flowing through this computer and says, hey, are there any username and password combinations that are being sent? Now, going over to our client computer, our victim, we I previously looked up their ARP tables, so you can see what MAC addresses are associated with which actual addresses on here. But if we refresh this and take another look at it, you'll notice that, hey, these two MAC addresses are the same, so .15 and .15 are pointing to the same MAC address. So anything we send out to .12 is actually going to be going to .15's MAC address, so it's going to be going to our Kali installation. But generally speaking, most people don't look at uh, ARP tables. They just look at, for example, our FTP client, FileZilla. So we want to log into our host .12. We have our username. We have our password. We'll go ahead and connect. We'll go ahead and download a file, overwrite the file that we already have, and then we'll go ahead and disconnect. So from the client side, nothing unusual happened. However, on our attacker side, we got the username and password. The username is VM1 and the password is 5. Now digging a little deeper, we have Wireshark, which is a packet sniffing tool. I've set it up so it's only looking at packets that are flowing in between .11 and .12 that are specifically either FTP packets or FTP data packets. So here you can see when they started up their connection, uh, you can see that Dot one two sent a packet dot one one requesting username and password. Dot one one replied with its username via one and its password five. And then down here, you can actually see the data that was sent. That is to say, this to be or not to be, which is the contents of the file. So therefore, uh, we were able to get in the middle of these two computers and intercept all of the data. Now, not only can you get in between two computers, you could also get in between a computer and a router and therefore see everything that the computer sends to the internet, and a lot more. The defenses against this are first make sure that all your traffic is encrypted, for example using HTTPS if you're on the web, and certificates will usually take care of this for you. In any case, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and uh, learned something. I know I did. Have a great day.